Welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Walker. This is an update episode for you in regards to the drama between Miss Universe Canada's team and Michael Cinco. If you're brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the notifications bell so you can know when new episodes like this come out every week. Today's episode is brought to you by Rehearsed to Relatable. Pageant contestants, this is where you can go to learn how to make an impact in that interview room. This is how you can learn how to create a memorable personal brand. If you wanna learn more, click the description. Wow, I really thought that after the last episode, things were done and done, right? It, it's just, it was an unfortunate thing that happened between the two parties. And if you want to check out the other episode, you can watch it here. I'll link it in the corner. But I thought we were finished. And then unfortunately, another Filipino designer came out and shared about their experiences with the Miss Universe Canada organization. And seeing that made me really sad. I, I don't want to get into all of the details there. I'm just going to post Ryan's story on this episode, but essentially what happened was that he was under the impression that he was going to make evening gowns for the preliminary competition and for the finals competition for Miss Universe Canada for 2018. And he spent a lot of money with his team going out to Thailand and dressing Miss Universe Canada and making sure everything was perfect for her. And of course the materials of the gown, the man hours, all of those things, he made several gown options for her. Then he was surprised to see that she did not wear his gown for prelims and then was assured once again, she would wear it for finals. And then once again, didn't see his gown on her for finals. So it's a really, really unfortunate thing to happen. And I, I think that what's important is that you are gonna be a person of your word. So if you say that we're working with this one designer and we will feature your styles on her for finals, then that's exactly what should happen. And I know that that was probably an oral agreement, but that is also why it's so important, friends, to get things on paper. I think that that's a really good lesson from this. And that's something that I do whenever I have brand collaborations. I wanna make sure that everything is in writing and that both parties agree to certain terms and conditions and that it's signed by both parties. So that's something really, really important whenever you're gonna be conducting collaborations with different brands or designers. So that's something I want not only designers to really be thinking about, but also contestants in the future. And I feel like that can assure that both parties are happy in the end by both promising to deliver something and then both people get what they wanted in the end. That's an important takeaway. The other update I wanted to share here in this episode, which I think is an important one, is that on Michael Cinco's post of Nova, when she was competing at Miss Universe, he posted her in the beautiful yellow gown, which was just stunning. And she did comment thank you in the comment section several days ago. She did actually say thank you, but I can understand because Michael is a very popular designer that he missed that message altogether, him or his team. So. I think that's a communication error. Also, ladies, if this happens to you, you know, you can definitely still go that extra mile, DM the sponsor, send them a letter, send them a thank you card, give them a call, give them a visit. There's different ways that you can make sure that you reached your sponsor so that they know that you appreciate whatever it was that they sponsored you with. And I think that that's important, especially if you're working with a sponsor who's so popular and so busy, they might miss those messages. So I just wanted to say that she did say thank you, because I know that I you know that was a lot of this, the speculation swirling around all of this. In addition to that, she also released a video statement and it was a little bit vague. I'm gonna let you watch it for yourself and just come to your own conclusions. In my opinion, it was just a little bit vague and I don't think it's what people really wanted to hear or it's how they wanted to hear her address the situation, but this is how she chose to address the whole situation. And it really, you know, like that's, that's her prerogative, totally up to her. I know that a lot of you in the comments are probably gonna have something to say about what she said, but like I said, I'm gonna let you reach your own conclusions on that. Hi everyone. So I just want to address the feud that recently transpired between my team, MG Mode and Michael Cinco. Unfortunately, I've been made to be involved, so I just want to clarify a few things. 
This really hurts me because I have nothing but love for both parties. They have both helped me in ways that I can't even count. So every day I do count my blessings because of these two people. MG Mode, or I guess three because MG Mode is two people, and Michael Single. Michael, I have nothing but love and gratitude towards you. You have created the most beautiful gown I could even think of. I've never once imagined that I would work with you because you're Michael Cinco. So the fact that I was able to work with you is honestly a highlight of my career as Miss Universe Canada. So I just want you to know that that gratitude will never diminish no matter what. And I've expressed that gratitude publicly and privately. And God knows, God knows my heart. I, I really do advocate for gratitude because I really feel that gratitude is the greatest multiplier in life. The more grateful you are in life, the more life gives to you. So please know that that will never change. I will continue and will always be grateful towards you because you have been nothing but kind to me. Nothing but kind. Yeah, this, this really breaks my heart because I love you both so much and you both helped me in many ways that I can even imagine. MG Mode, you guys know that I love you so, so much. You have made my dream meeting my family a reality along with the Open Airlines and the Miss Universe Canada organization. So just to have these two highlights of my career be attached to such negativity is what I don't like. I don't like that at all because I want to look back and think, wow, I've worked with Michael Single, the Michael Single, and wow, I met my family. 2021 has been a year of so many blessings for me, meeting my family, working with Michael Single, shooting in the desert. Like how could I? How could I forget those events? How could I not be thankful? So it just boggles my mind that my gratitude would even be in question. Anyone knows anytime I talk about my gowns and these three individuals actually, I always express nothing but thanks because they have all been so great to me. So please, all I'm asking is that you attach these great events of my life with positivity because they've been nothing but positive for me. Working with Michael Cinco, that's a once in a lifetime. Not everyone gets that opportunity. And I will forever be grateful. And seeing my family, all this happened during a pandemic and all of this happened because of Miss Universe Canada and MG Mode and Ethiopian Airlines. So I just want you guys to stop fighting. I want this to be taken privately. I don't think you are both serving of this it's it's not fair to all of your hard work i don't want to question any of your integrities because i stand behind the three of you i think you are all great individuals and i just hope i just want that to be the last thing to remember is like wow michael's amazing wow keen mcgall are amazing that's all i want because you are amazing individuals so for all of you online please don't don't give into the drama it's not worth it let's not let's not spread more negativity let's just spread love it's, it's so draining and I'm sad that I have to stop what I'm doing and, and address this. I just want to take a few minutes away from social media and just reflect on life and just, you know, figure out what my next move are and just be with my friends and family. But I'm unable to do that because I have to address this. And it's not fair. It's not fair to anyone. It's not fair to any anyone involved that they have to stop what they're doing and give into this negativity. This is devil's work. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. So please, just to spread love. Um, don't give in. Let's have the last memories be of nothing but love. Kind of shocked at how this is all blowing up, and I have seen this story featured on multiple Filipino news sites, and it's just kind of insane. That's not really, really great press. I would assume that Michael really doesn't want to be associated with news stories like that for his brand, which would make sense. But in this case, I think that it just sheds a light on what's going on in the Miss Universe Canada organization and that there has been things like this going on with designers and issues with gowns in the past. There's also another designer that was supposed to make her interview outfit and they went through a lot in order to be able to create this outfit within two days from the Philippines and get it 
to the US, which is crazy for me. I don't even know how you can really ship it that fast, let alone design an entire interview outfit, custom piece. It just blows my mind. So it just makes me a little bit sad because I know as a creator that a lot goes into the work that we do, whether, whether that's gown production or whether that's what I even do here on this channel. The work that I put in to creating my episodes, sharing about them. There's just so much that goes on behind the scenes that people are invested in that results in a final product. And so it makes me really, really sad because I do feel like it's unfair to designers to ask of them to deliver these beautiful pieces in a very short amount of time at their own expense and then not wear the pieces. If you have given your word that the pieces will be worn, then your contestant needs to wear them at the end of the day. That's my opinion. If you cannot guarantee that, then you need to let the designers know ahead of time so that the designer can make that decision for themselves. If this is a risk that they're willing to take, do they have those additional resources that they can lend that in the event that they might get some press or media, from their piece being worn by a Miss Universe title holder, that that makes sense for them, that it would be a best possible scenario for them. And I think that that should always be left up to the designer. I think overall, that's why this is such a great lesson of the importance of communication, right? I think we all know that. I think we all know that communication is very important in any relationship. Doesn't matter in your personal life or your business relationships. I think a lot of these things could have been addressed if the communication lines were a little bit more open. Now I did read online and heard from some of you that Michael Cinco tried to address this issue privately, but that the Miss Universe Canada team left their remarks online, which of course everybody's looking at. It's right after Miss Universe. People are still thinking a lot about the competition and they're still paying attention and looking for things online. And I think that it would have been smart on their part to remove their post, even if it was an emotional thing, like whatever it was that they felt the need to post that for, I'm not really sure. I understand that people make mistakes and I think that by Michael contacting the organization to please remove these comments so we can resolve this was a great idea, but for whatever reason, I will never know, you will never know, I'm not in their minds, they decided to leave that on and let this all play out on social media and now it's blown up into this huge thing and I think that it's really affecting, obviously, their reputations within the pageant industry and hurting those potential partnerships and brand collaborations in the future for their title holders. So that really makes me sad because obviously Nova's already competed, but what about the future of other Miss Universe Canada title holders? They're gonna be, they're gonna lose a lot of support for them. I feel like the real loser in all of this are the future contestants now that are not gonna have the support that they need for Miss Universe from such incredible designers like Michael Cinco or like Ryan Fernandez. It's just sad that they're not gonna even have that as an option, I would assume. I'm, I would assume that they're not planning on working with that organization anymore. And I know that there's lots of other designers out there, but still, these, these ones are very, very talented and the Miss Universe Canada contestants have been very fortunate to wear these designers in the past on the Miss Universe stage. These are stunning pieces that they're wearing. They're really, really beautiful. I hope that eventually, with a little bit of time, everybody can show grace and forgiveness and admit any wrongs and ask for that forgiveness and just say, I'm sorry, so that everybody can move on. I think that's what's really important here. Always remember that none of us are perfect and we all handle things sometimes in ways that we wish we hadn't. And I think that a lot of that happened here. I feel like if people could go back, they probably would have handled things a little bit differently in hindsight. And so let that be a lesson really to all of us who witnessed it, also to the people that were involved. I just hope that people can learn to just say, I'm sorry, and I, and I could have done better, and I wanna move forward from this, and that everybody, else that's you know directly or indirectly involved can say I accept that and I forgive you because I think that's a really important part of always being able to show respect for one another and 
to heal and to move past mistakes when we make them. So I'm really, I'm really hopeful that that'll happen in some way. The other thing I forgot to mention, I almost forgot to mention, was that Sierra did comment on this. A lot of you I know are subscribed to Sierra, Miss Universe Canada, who is very, very sweet, love her. And she made an Instagram post on it. You guys can read that for yourself, but essentially she says that she has not worked with the organization in several years and that she is not caught up on all the drama. So I don't know what that means, whether she will make an episode about this or not, but I would be really interested to hear her take on all of this because she actually did release a interview with Ryan in September, 2020. And he kind of shared his story about what happened the year that he was supposed to design the gowns. Well, he did design the gowns and did produce them, but they were not worn by Miss Universe Canada 2018. So that's a whole other episode you guys can check out on her channel and kind of just learn more about what's been going on. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you're gonna come back for lots more. Thank you and I hope you have a great weekend too or beginning of your work week, depending on where you are in the world, right? Right? I don't know what time it is, but wherever it is, I hope you're getting some rest and I hope that you're gonna have a great week. I'll see you next time.